this presentation today is all about creating and hosting Kahoot's like a pro this school year. So not necessarily going back to Kahoot basics, because we'll be talking about really all the features that we offer here. But I want to make sure that you're, you all are comfortable with creating Kahoot's. Where do those Kahoot's then get saved? And then how do you access the Kahoot's that you've created to play whenever you're ready to host? So we'll be focusing on creating and hosting Kahoot's. But what are we going to cover during that time? So we're going to talk about what is Kahoot. So if you're a little bit less familiar with Kahoot, what is Kahoot as a platform, as a tool? And then we are going to be mostly demonstrating the Kahoot creator and how to host and play a Kahoot. Now we're going to end off with tips to save time and to get started with creating Kahoots with some specific back to school tips as well. So that's what we're going to be covering. So what is Kahoot? Kahoot is a global learning platform that makes it easy for anyone to create, share, and host learning sessions that drive compelling engagement and unlock learning potential. So what are those different use cases? Kahoot is most often used for revision, review, and retrieval. Also for continuous low stakes assessment. So really great for bringing engagement to various different types of formative assessment is what Kahoot can be great for. But you can also use it to introduce and instruct on brand new content in the form of interactive presentations. You can use it as a reward, an icebreaker, an exit ticket, an energizer, a brain break. You can also assign Kahoot's as homework or as study resources for students as well. So you can uh, send Kahoot's home with students, refer them to complete at their own time whenever works best for them. And you might also be here to use Kahoot for training and development. I use Kahoot very regularly for trainings. And so you can do that as well, no matter the subject. And so Kahoot can be used in all of these different ways to bring more engagement to your audiences. Now, the key elements of a Kahoot experience we're gonna start off with talking about creating and discovering. So whether you're creating your own cahoots or finding existing cahoots that are already out there, then you are looking for those learning games, creating those learning games yourself. And then you want to host or assign those cahoots. So the cahoots that you are creating, there are many different ways that you can host them. And so we have a synchronous option with our live way to play in which we have both presenter paced and student paced modes of live play. And you can also assign Kahoots asynchronously. So that use case of taking, you know, Kahoots and assigning them as homework is our assigned way to play. And then you can also gather insights from those different ways to play. We're not going to be covering reporting during this deep dive. So we are going to focusing on these first three. So how to take a Kahoot from the creator and then how to host it. And we'll be focusing more on a live session. Now, before I launch into the demonstration, I want to go over quickly, you know, the question of what plan do I have? So I am going to be demonstrating from what is a Kahoot EDU subscription, which is one of our team plans that we generally recommend for teams of teachers across a school, a department, a campus, a district. And so that's where you're going to be seeing really all the features that Kahoot offers in one of those EDU plans. Now, you might be on one of our individual plans, in which case those are listed below. We do have some legacy plans and some newer plans, so something to keep in mind. But they very closely align with, you know, the new plan aligns with the legacy and so on and so forth. And there are some resources we can share in the Q&A if you are curious about what features you have access to, but it's going to differ based on the plan that you're on. Now, how do you easily find out what plan you're on? One of the biggest indicators is when you're logged into your account, your logo is actually going to show you or present to you the plan name that you're a part of. But the easiest thing to do is actually go up into the icon between the create and the notification bell in the top right corner of your screen, open that up and take a look at billing. So if you are in a paid plan of Kahoot, that will also inform you on what plan you are on. I want to start off with just this guiding idea, right? So this is going to be how we're going to proceed with the demonstration. So during this semester, I will have a unit on coral reef ecosystems. I need to create an engaging activity about the Great Barrier Reef for my students, and I want to use Kahoot. 
So let's go ahead and hop over in to the Kahoot platform. So you can log into your Kahoot account at kahoot.com, or you can sign up for an, a Kahoot account at kahoot.com. But once you're logged in, your screen is going to look pretty similar to mine. And so this is my home page where there's a lot of different features and options that you can consider on the home page. But really today we're going to be focusing on creating. Now, before I go to create, I just wanna point out one thing. And that's if you are on a team plan, you're going to have different workspaces that you can create Cahoots in. So if you are in your private workspace, any Cahoots you create are going to save into that private workspace. And same thing for your team workspace, any Cahoots created in your team workspace will be saved there. It's kind of like a my drive and a share drive. We'll talk about this a little bit more later as well when we talk about saving Cahoots in, in the library, but I just wanted to point out that currently I'm going to create a Kahoot from my private. Not all of you will have a team workspace, but just in case you do, I wanted to provide that distinction before we got started. So there's many different ways that you can end up in the Kahoot creator. So I am going to go ahead and go into the creator completely from scratch. So when I click on create, I'm given the option to create a Kahoot or a course. Courses are a little bit different than a single Kahoot. It's a way to kind of bring a lot of Kahoots together into a course, but also along with different activities or even PDF documents, but we're gonna focus on a single Kahoot today as that represents you know, a learning game, a session with a single Kahoot. So in the Kahoot creator, the first question type that pops up is our quiz, which is where Kahoot really got started. So in using Kahoot maybe for free in the past, or if you are still currently, a quiz question is available to you along with a true false. Now, Kahoot's can be built up using interactive question types and slides. So when I click on add question, you'll see all of the different question types that Kahoot currently offers. Again, I'm presenting from an EDU subscription. And those question types are broken down into two different categories, one of testing knowledge and the other collecting opinions. These testing knowledge question types are going to assess students. It's also going to gamify the Kahoot experience. And there is going to be a correct answer to these questions by design, where you'll get an accuracy-based report at the end of the Kahoot on how students performed in those questions. Now, if you wanna remove the pressure of points from the Kahoot experience, or if you simply wanna survey or gather feedback from students, you can use our collecting opinion question types. So this opens up the opportunity in the different ways you can use Kahoot, but also in how you can design your Kahoot. And you can approach your Kahoot very similarly to how you approach planning any lesson. So defining an objective, figuring out what needs to be included, and then you can start to design based on these tools that are available to you. Now, I mentioned that we have these interactive question types but you can also include slides as well. And we have different slide templates that you can create and edit completely within the Kahoot Creator. But you can also import slides from existing presentations. So we'll be doing a little bit of all of this today, but let's go ahead and start off with, you know, starting to add these interactive question types that we're interested in including. So I'm going to go ahead and create a quiz question to start. Now I'm creating a Kahoot about the Great Barrier Reef. So what I'm interested in doing is starting off with a question about where is the Great Barrier Reef located? So I can provide my answer options down below and I am going to go based off of the states in Australia, New South Wales, Victoria. Okay, so where is the Great Barrier Reef located? It is located in Queensland. So I'm going to select that as the correct answer. And if a student responded with Queensland, they would get points towards this Kahoot. Now there's various customization options that you have with any of the question types that you're creating, including what's available over here on the right hand side. With adjusting the time limit, so maybe I want to give them closer to 30 seconds for this question, 
I can also adjust the points, in which case I'm going to keep it at standard for now, but later on we might make some adjustments to the points for a question. And then also if you have the option with a quiz question, you can design both a multi-select and single select. But we're gonna keep this as a single select as there is only one correct answer. Now also with our questions, we can include different forms of media to provide some visual aid. So if I want to use a picture here, it looks like we already have some popping up from Queensland, Australia, which is great. But let's just go ahead and search to see what we come up with within our Getty image library. So I'll include a picture of Australia for this one. Now I'm ready to go ahead and add another question, but I want to show you some other ways to find questions or to have questions generated versus off of creating everything from scratch. We might be here a long time if we're going to create every single thing from scratch. So I wanna hop into the question bank first. So the question bank is going to let you search for existing questions that are out there in Cahoots available in the Discover area. So where there's public Cahoots available for you to host, or you can also search within your library. So let's say I wanted to find a question about favorite coral reef organisms. So you'll see here that there's some questions that have appeared and these are all part of existing cahoots that have been created. So if I wanted to take a look at the whole cahoot, I definitely could, but here's where I can open up those questions to then decide to add that into my cahoot. So again, these are questions that are generated from people who are creating cahoots, just like hopefully you will be creating cahoots soon or if you already do. So you can include those in your cahoot. Now, additionally, we can hop over into our AI question generator. Now our AI question generator is currently available with Kahoot plus Max and Kahoot EDU plans. So the AI question generator is where you get to type in a topic such as the Great Barrier Reef and click continue to generate questions that are coming from an AI source. So rather than it being created by somebody else out there who is also cahooting, we can generate questions from AI. And you can see here, we support a number of our different question types, such as our quiz, true, false, a slider. So let's see here. So we have a quiz question, what ocean is the Great Barrier Reef located in? Located in the Pacific, I could include that question. What is the Great Barrier Reef? A coral reef system. That's a pretty intro question that I would be happy to include. I'll go ahead and add that one. We also have approximate length. Is the Great Barrier Reef the world's largest coral reef ecosystem? A true false. I'll include that question in. Now I also want to include this slider. So how many species of fish live on the Great Barrier Reef? And include that question into my Kahoot. So you'll see here that within these AI generated questions and even the question bank, it's just giving you options to questions that you can include in your Kahoot. And so that's how you can kind of easily find questions to incorporate into your Kahoot. And you'll notice that what's really helpful is for question types like quiz, where you don't necessarily always want to come up with your own correct answers to the questions, you can use the AI question generator to support you in doing that. So now we've added a few additional questions to our Kahoot. So let's start off with this poll. Now, I personally like to use any of our surveying or gathering feedback question types at the start of my Kahoot. So I'm going to pop that one up into the first place spot. You'll notice that the experience within the Kahoot creator is very similar to when you are creating a slide presentation and whatever tool you use. So whether it's PowerPoint or Google Slides, you're able to drag and drop questions where you want them to be placed. Let's see here, we'll keep that one. We also have a true false. I'm gonna change this one a little bit. So you'll notice too that when these questions are included in your Kahoot, you're able to make edits to them. So we'll add a period here just to make it a statement, but you are able to make any adjustments to the question, even change the answer options. Now our slider question type is going to 
provides students the option to submit a numbered response across a particular scale. So this question provided a scale between 1460, between 1510, but let's say I wanted to expand this to 1600. That's an option that I have. It's going to make the range a little bit bigger. And I can even add a unit of species. Now, you'll see here that there's this highlighted area called our answer margin. And so you're able to adjust the answer margin over here on the right hand side, whether you want to make it a little bit tighter or only accept the correct answer, or you can take it to the full scale or full range. Now, what happens within the answer margin is that all students who respond to a number within the answer margin, they get points towards their response and they get more points the closer they are to the correct answer. So if you're introducing a new piece of information, you might wanna give them a pretty big answer margin to really reward them for that participation and for that engagement. Whereas if you are assessing them and saying, you know, I really do expect you to know this, this answer, then you could say, nope, I'm only going to give you points if you submit the exact correct answer. So within this question type of a slider, it really just depends on when you're hosting this Kahoot and whatever you're teaching, and also just the entire goal of the Kahoot itself. So that is our slider. Now you'll notice that the questions that were generated or even a question that was pulled in doesn't necessarily include different media options. And so again, we can hop back into our media to look at our different image libraries or even hop into Giphy to search for coral reefs and find some of those moving images that can then be included in my Kahoot. So you can enhance any of your question types with different forms of media. So another question that I want to include is a type answer. So with a type answer, I want to ask, what gives coral its bright colors? Fix that grammatically there. So the answer here, Suzanne Belly. So with a type answer, what's going to happen is that when this question is presented, students are required to then type in their response to the question. Now I could add up to four accepted answers. This is not case sensitive, but students are typing in the response versus the, you know, the answer being available up on the screen, such as with a quiz question. And so this one here, it's going to really challenge students to remember what they've learned and to be able to submit the correct response. Again, here we can adjust the time limit and say that I want to make this a little bit more, or I consider this to be a little bit more of a challenging question just because this is quite a large word. So I'll make this double points. The reason why you might want to include double points in any questions that you're creating is that a double point question can help to shake up the scoreboard. We're going to play this Kahoot here in a little bit. And so if you have a double point question, we hope to see shifts in the scoreboard. It's going to keep students engaged in the Kahoot if you're able to make sure the, sh the scoreboard keeps shifting. So we're going to make that a double point question. Let's say I wanted to include a true false that said, the Great Barrier Reef is one large reef. So the answer to that is false. Now with a false, true, false question, naturally you would want to reinforce what the correct answer to that question is. So we often get asked, you know, is there an opportunity for me to type in feedback to a particular question or to embed that into the questions that I'm creating? That is absolutely an option if you decide to incorporate a slide. So let's just open up a classic slide. I want to make it known and I want to reinforce that no, it's not made up of one single reef. It's actually made up of nearly 3000 individual reefs and 900 islands. Now, anytime that you decide to include a slide in your Kahoot, it's going to play in the specific order that you've created it in. And so having that true false and the slide after it, that's going to play that way whenever you go to host it. 
Now let's say too, we're interested in including or embedding a video into this Kahoot. So I'll go back into add a slide again and go to our big media slide. I personally recommend our big media slide for embedding videos just because this is going to put all the focus on the video rather than needing to watch a video and then also answer questions at the same time. So we'll search within YouTube and find some great videos to include in my Kahoot. I can decide when I want the video to start and end, but go ahead and include it. And so once we come to this part in the Kahoot, this video would then play. And if you want to design questions based off this video, you can of course add those questions in after the video. I'll go ahead and move this up and around a little bit again. We have some other different question types here, such as puzzle. This is going to ask players to place answers in a specific order. And then again, we also have our collecting opinion question types. So let's say that I wanted to also include an open-ended question where students can type up to 250 characters and respond to what are questions you still have about the Great Barrier Reef? And so this is something that you might wanna to ask towards the end of your Kahoot. So starting off with a poll and ending with an open-ended. So what are still some things that are confusing to students? Maybe what questions do they still have? What do you need to reinforce with them? You're going to get a lot of that information based on their responses in the questions throughout the Kahoot, but this is where you can actually collect short answer responses from all your students through a Kahoot rather than just asking the question openly out to the class. So those are, again, just an overview of all of our different question types that we do offer. But drop-in is another one of our newest ones too. Let's say, for example, I wanted to ask, you know, where is the Great Barrier Reef? I could search for a world map and then include that and drop pin and then students would drop a pin over that area of Australia indicating that they know where the Great Barrier Reef is located. But I'm going to go ahead and delete this question which you are able to do. So if you've decided or you've worked on a question that you want to remove you absolutely can. Now if you haven't noticed yet you'll see that my Kahoot is auto saving. So I do not have to regularly go save this Kahoot even if I were to exit, if my computer were to crash, this Kahoot would save as a draft form. And so your Kahoot does autosave, which is important to know and understand about Kahoots. Let me add one more question in just to show you what a multi-select quiz question looks like. So if I want to ask the question of what type of reefs make up the Great Barrier Reef, we have fringing reefs and atolls. So these are generally known as the three types of reefs uh, that make up a coral reef ecosystem. So for the Great Barrier Reef in particular, fringing reefs and barrier reefs are the correct answers to that question. Now you'll see that once I select two of these as correct answers, we've automatically switched to a multi-select quiz question. And so upon coming to this question, you'll be asked to select multiple correct answers and then submit your response. So that's available within our quiz question type to be able to have a multi-select question. So you always wanna review your Kahoot. Anytime you see this little exclamation point here, it lets you know that something needs to be fixed. Also, if I want to go and save the Kahoot, it's going to tell me that I have a question missing, I have answers missing, and a correct answer is not selected. So this is going to tell you if there's anything you need to fix in your Kahoot before you're ready to go and actually post it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to edit. And rather than editing this question, I'm going to go ahead and simply delete it. Now you'll want to consider the settings of your Kahoot. So giving your Kahoot a title, a description, and you can even go ahead and organize your Kahoots if you want to, putting them into folders if you have those available. Also too, you'll want to consider the visibility. So I'm going to go ahead and make this Kahoot private. You can also update and change the cover image based on those images used within the Kahoot, but then also those can be uploaded yourself. Now, another feature within the creator 
is the option to import from a spreadsheet. So our spreadsheet template is looks just like this. And if you click on import spreadsheet, you're taken to be able to download it. So you wanna make sure that you're downloading our template and building off of our template. And once you design the quiz within the template, you would then download it from either Excel or whatever you're working from in these file formats. And then you will want to import that back into the Kahoot creator. So that will also auto-populate questions based off of what you've designed in a spreadsheet. Now, additionally, you can import slides from existing presentations. So I do want to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to upload a file. I'm going to include some slides into my presentation. Now I'm able to keep editing while importing and those will work to be imported. So you'll see that the slides automatically populate down at the bottom of my Kahoot here, but I could always drag and drop these slides around. And this will be the end of our presentation today after we go to host this Kahoot. You'll also notice that you can take a quick view at the timer option. So let's say for, again, I like to bump pretty much everything up to 30 seconds whenever I'm hosting a Kahoot, but we'll leave these for now. All right, we're going to give that a name, select done. Now, last but not least, I might want to consider the theme that I want to apply to this Kahoot. This is also something that you can change whenever you go to host the Kahoot. But if you want to assign a theme to it, you can. Whether it's a theme that you've added or created yourself, which you are able to upload and include a theme, again, depending on the plan that you have. But you can also choose a number of different themes. So some of these are holiday-based. Some of them are, we have a sports package right now with a lot of the sporting events that are going on. And so you can apply any of these themes to your Kahoot, in which case it will take over the entire background of the Kahoot. And even some of them might change the color options and even the fonts used in your Kahoot, such as our space theme. But we're going to go ahead and stick with standard, but that's just another interesting way to kind of customize what your Kahoot might look like whenever you go to host it. So we're gonna go ahead and click save on this Kahoot. Now you're immediately presented with previewing the Kahoot, starting the Kahoot, sharing the Kahoot, or even going ahead and playing it in one of our live ways to play, but specifically within one of our game modes. Now I'll show you quickly what preview is because I want you to understand that this is a really cool feature that allows you to practice hosting the Kahoot and playing the Kahoot. So if you're just getting started in hosting Kahoots, or you simply just want to test out playing a Kahoot on your own, you can use our preview function to do that. So I wouldn't recommend using this with students, but if you're building confidence in your own Kahooting, then using that preview to practice and play the Kahoot in any of these different modes is a great way to get started but I am not ready to play this Kahoot yet. I don't think very often you're going to be creating a Kahoot to then go immediately play it. It might be the case in which we give you some shortcuts, but let's go ahead and click done. So you'll notice that we are now in our library. So within the library and within your folders, this is where Kahoots are saved. So Kahoots are saved in your folders. It looks like I need to place this as private again. So you can also update visibility once you're in your library. And there's a lot of great things you can do from your library, such as go ahead and host those Kahoots. You can also go back in to edit that Kahoot again. And then you can also use a couple of these different functions, including sharing that Kahoot as well. The Kahoots are also accessible to you from the Kahoots tab up top, in which case you have very similar options. But again, Kahoots are saved in your library. So if you're on your homepage, we do give you a bit of a shortcut to the Kahoots that are in your library. You can also navigate over to your library to find the Kahoots that you have saved. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start the Kahoot that we just created to go through some of these different options that we have. So I mentioned that we have presenter-led modes and we have student-led modes. We're going to go ahead and play in our classic mode, but I do want to just show you that any Kahoot that you create, that you find out there, 
you can host in any of these different ways. So say I wanted to host this Kahoot as a review activity to play in Tallis Tower. You'll notice that when I go to play Tallis Tower, it's telling me that only seven out of the 14 questions or components of the Kahoot are going to be played and I am able to review that. So a game mode is not going to use any of the slides, whether they're imported or created or any of the polling style questions. It's going to focus in and really only pull out those quizzing or assessment style questions. So again, if you wanna take your Kahoot, even if it has all these different elements to it, you can still host it in a review way and focus on those testing knowledge question types. But we are going to go into our classic mode. And I will ask you to join this Kahoot where you can join at www.kahoot.it or you can also join with the Kahoot app. The game pin is going to give you unique access to this game. Hold on. We're going to turn off autoplay to make sure that you can join this Kahoot. And since I already pulled that up, the settings for your Kahoot are found down in the bottom right-hand corner. So there's a couple of settings that we, you know, prefer <laughs> that you consider up uh, being at the top here, such as showing questions and answers on players' devices. But there's a number of different settings down below too, where you can change the different, uh, you know, the way that the Kahoot is going to be played essentially. And you do have some characters that you're able to customize and edit. So while you're waiting for the Kahoot to start, you can customize your character. I'm going to go ahead and get started. But if you still want to continue to join this Kahoot, that is fine. The game pin will be located down at the bottom of the screen. So this is the demo, the Kahoot that we just created, which is going to start off with a poll. So again, no points up for grabs here. But of these different options, what is your favorite coral reef organism? The game pin is located down at the bottom of the screen. So we're big sea turtle fans uh, and clownfish fans, and also some people who are interested in coral with some minimal excitement around stingrays, sharks, and moray eels. My personal favorite is a stingray. Uh, so at least one other person agrees that they're really cool, um, but awesome. So again, this is a poll, so no points here, nothing towards the game quite yet, but let's move on to our next question. So where is the Great Barrier Reef located? Do we remember? This is your first opportunity for points. Awesome, yes. So the Great Barrier Reef is located off of the state of Queensland in Australia. Now you'll notice here, again, we're playing in our classic live way to play right now. And so why this is called presenter-led, it's because I am controlling the pace of the Kahoot. I'm speaking to the Kahoot and you're all answering every question at the same time. So be mindful that if you go to play classic, this is a similar experience to what you would if you were hosting it. But we have our first scoreboard here where if you're not familiar with live Kahooting, points are generated both based off of speed and accuracy. And that's what's going to change, you know, where people are at in the game when it comes to the scoreboard. So now we have our double point question of type answer. What gives coral its bright colors? Five seconds left. This one's a little bit harder. Awesome, 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 awesome. Cool. So five of you submitted Zuzantheli. And but what you'll see, what you'll notice is that in a, so again, I'm presenting from a Kahoot EDU subscription where this is possible, but I am able to review all of the answers that you submitted. And so this one here, as an example, is very, very, very close. We forgot one L, which is totally fine with me. I'm willing to accept that. And it's even telling me that it's similar to the correct answer. So when it comes to type answer where, as you probably have all been asking yourself, you know, there's a lot of different ways that students might respond to this question. 
in which I want to accept the answer, but I'm not going to be able to come up with all of those on my own. And so if you have a subscription like Kahoot EDU, you're able to review all of those answers that have been submitted and actually control which players get points. I will accept this one. It's pretty close enough for me. Cool. So we're going to submit that and give those players some points. All right, so you can see here that caused a huge shift in the scoreboard. So the more we can make a scoreboard shift during a Kahoot, the more players are going to remain in the in, remain engaged in the Kahoot experience. So that's what we like to see. So true or false, the Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef ecosystem coral reef system. All right, it is true. It is the world's largest coral reef system, world's largest living structure as well. All right, so we are coming close to time, but I do want you to experience a slider real quick. So do we remember how many species of fish live on the Great Barrier Reef? All right, 1530. Guesses all across the scale, but it looks like a few of you submitted that correct answer of 1500. And there was a bit of an answer margin given there. So remember, if you answered within this highlighted blue area, then you'll get points towards this question. You just get more points the closer you are to the correct answer. So a little bit of a shift on the bottom of our leaderboard, but PW is still at the top. Now, I'm going to skip through the video because we don't need to watch it. All right. Sorry, I'm going to be skipping through a bit because we are running out of time. But yes, False the Great Barrier Reef is composed of nearly 3,000 individual reefs and 900 islands. Now, this is our first slide that we've come to in the Kahoot. So you'll see that there is no timer associated with slides. So it allows me to connect back with you all as my audience to you know, and to further instruct, to provide feedback, to provide some clarification, even to answer any questions that you might have. And so that's one thing that I really love and appreciate about slides. So we'll get a quiz question again, but what type of reefs make up the GBR? Do we remember? This is a multi-select quiz question. Awesome, yes, fringing and barrier, not atolls. So I'm gonna skip through this open-ended question, but I just want you for you know 10 seconds to just look at and type in, you know, how long of a response can you type into this one here? But I am going to skip us through very shortly. All right. And with these answers being submitted, you'll be able to review them. So I could show the answer submitted as you can see. Awesome. How healthy is it now? How do I learn more about the Great Barrier Reef? And your responses are going to continue to come up here. How do we protect them? Oh, I love these. So as you can see, this is a really great way. Another, another interesting way to engage with students in asking an open-ended question. So we already talked about several of these different options that you have for saving time, our AI question generator being one of them, importing from a spreadsheet. But you can also duplicate and customize or edit existing Kahoot. So you don't always have to complete or create everything completely from scratch. Our next deep dive webinar will actually be all about uh, discovering cahoots and best practices and finding cahoots to be able to use in your classrooms. And these are some ideas to get started. So if you are new to creating cahoots or if you're just looking for more inspiration, these are some options that you have. So if you want to help your students get to know you better, you can create a cahoot all about yourself, no subject matter you know uh, better than what you know about you. And so you can create a Kahoot about yourself to then host with your students. You can find a topic that you want to review, use the AI question generator to get some inspiration and continue to build off of those questions. You can import an existing slide deck and add interactive question types, super easy way to create a Kahoot and to be able to build out an interactive presentation. You can also leverage Kahoot to deliver the rules, procedures and expectations of your class. So those kind of mandatory administrative things that you need to do with your class at the beginning, maybe you're going over your syllabus, 
you could take that content and put it into Kahoot and just make it a more engaging experience for students to learn about what is expected of them for the upcoming school year. Now, if you are interested in getting access to more features, Kahoot Plus Max uh, as an individual plan is a full package offering of a lot of the features that Kahoot has, but Kahoot EDU is really what's going to give you every, every single thing that you saw in the demonstration today. So you can reach out on our website through contacting our team, or you can reach out directly to schoolpack at kahoot.com if you're interested in bringing Kahoot EDU to your school. So, you know, a school or a district, a campus, a department, upgrading several teachers to a plan like Kahoot EDU, making it easy for you to collaborate and share and also create awesome and high quality Kahoots. So we'll get our final podium for today. Potato Lord is in third. Will, great. So PW and Will with Mal and Princess in fourth and fifth. And I do see a couple of open questions in our Q&A that I can speak to uh, quickly. It uh, looks like they're also being answered for you uh, by my lovely colleagues, so I'm sure I've been answering all of your questions. But Will, that's a great one that I'll speak to uh, live. So if your Kahoot is saved as a draft, that just means that you probably haven't gone to officially save it or there's something that's preventing it from being played. And so what you'll want to do is if your Kahoot is stuck in a draft form, you'll simply just want to go back into the editor and then you'll want to finish and complete that Kahoot and then click save. But if your Kahoot is available, you know, in your folders, even if it says, you know, saved as a draft or something like that, you should be able to still go ahead and host it. And we hosted our Kahoot from start, but that assigned feature is that asynchronous option within Kahoot. So if I wanted to send this Kahoot home with all of you as homework, I could create a Kahoot assignment which is super easy, one click on assign, decide the different settings you want to set for the assignment, you click create, and then all I have to do is copy and share this URL with you all. A couple of other questions. How do you access the AI question tool again? I don't see it, I have Kahoot plus Max. So you should have the AI question generator in Kahoot plus Max. If you feel like you have the right plan but don't have the right feature, you can always reach out to our support team. We do have a really helpful help button down at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen that helps you easily find articles that even, it's very smart. So whatever page you're on, it will recommend articles relevant to creating, to hosting, to your library. But you can also go to our help and support center to submit a ticket if you do need further support. I need help with organizing my three sec sections of government class. How do I show the same Kahoot to all the students, but keep a record of the scores in three separate folders? And that's going to tie into the other question about, I assume, the reports reports student performance on Kahoot's, right? So these are very similar questions where uh, for the question asked about organizing, Whenever you host a Kahoot session, you're going to get a report just of that session. And so what you're going to end up with, I don't, not sure if I have a lot of reports here, but if I were to host demo coral reef quiz with three different groups of students, I would have three reports called demo coral reef quiz. And I am able to rename it to be able to more easily indicate what group of students this was with. So it's not so much as an organizing into folders or organizing cahoots for different classrooms. The reports is going to represent that specific session that you hosted with your students. And that's the same with assigned cahoots as well. And so to the other question about reports, yes. So this is how you all did on this demo coral reef quiz where you can look at the responses that you all had as players. And I can you know, take a look at what were some of the more difficult questions? Do I wanna reinforce that at a later time? So that's that fourth key element of the Kahoot experience when it comes to reviewing the report. How do you copy a Kahoot that you find? Super easy to do. So say you stumble across a Kahoot, of course, this is one that we created. 
But there's these vertical three dots, also this pencil button, that allows you to create a duplicate copy. So if you click on edit, it's going to take you into the creator to create a duplicate copy of that Kahoot. Or you can up, open up these three vertical dots here to click duplicate, and that will duplicate a copy and will put you in the Kahoot creator. So that is how you can copy existing Kahoots, whether it's one that you've created or if it's one that you find out and discover. For many of our Kahoots, you're going to find that function to be able to duplicate. Yes, to the question about results, reports is a universal feature within Kahoot. So with any Kahoot plan, you're going to get reports. So it doesn't matter what plan you're on for that feature. And can, yeah, so sorry, another question in the chat. Can you copy just one question? So you can't copy just one question, but if you remember when we went into the Kahoot creator itself, the question bank is going to pull specific questions in those Kahoot. So that's how you can copy one question from a Kahoot. You just kind of need to be able to know what you're searching for. So you're searching for questions themselves rather than whole Kahoots, or you can take those questions and include them in your Kahoot. So the question bank is kind of how you copy. And again, you can search from out within our public discover area, or you can search within your own library. And yes, an additional question, when duplicating a Kahoot, can you modify it? Anytime that you duplicate a Kahoot, it's either going to create a duplicate copy that you can then take into the editor, or if we go to discover, I show this one as an example all the time. And again, we'll be talking a little bit more about what you can do with Kahoots that you discover. But let's say this Kahoot here that was created by somebody else, if I click edit, that is going to prompt a duplicate copy. And we've landed in the Kahoot creator where I can now customize any aspect of this Kahoot. Uh, thank you so much for uh, attending this session and thank you for playing the Kahoot if you took part in that as well. Any training that I host, I really, you know, ask people to play the Kahoot because so much of the Kahoot experience is knowing Kahoot as a player. It can really help to improve how you create Kahoots. So the more opportunities you can have to play either your own Kahoots or Kahoots hosted by others, the better. It's going to make you a better Kahoot creator. Oh,